So will the new Cabinet ministers be able to deliver or are opposition parties right when they brand them flops and berate politicians? We got the thoughts of Jeff Aberdeen, who was Chief of Staff to the former First Minister Alex Salmond, and Andy McKeever, who's a former Head of Communications for the Scottish Conservatives. Jeff, what's your assessment of this new Cabinet? Well, all cabinet positions are clearly important to the running country. But there's three kind of uh, portfolios and, and, and cabinet secretaries that I'd like to point out uh, as really important, I think, to, to demonstrate the success or otherwise of this administration. Firstly, uh, Michael Matheson, uh, obviously an experienced head going to uh, health secretary. Clearly a lot of reform that needs to take place there. It's creaking just now, so it's important that he gets off to a good start. Secondly, uh, Marie McCallan, uh, I don't know her as well, uh, young, but everyone that tells me around Holyrood says that she's extremely talented and capable. And of course, uh, accelerating our ability to meet net zero and deal with the climate emergency whilst protecting jobs and industry is clearly an issue that transcends public discourse just now. And linked to that uh, portfolio, of course, is uh, Neil Gray as the economy and energy secretary, a massively important uh, brief. I think it's safe to say that uh, uh, relations with business have been uh, frayed in recent times, so he's going to have to reconcile that, be more proactive. And I'd like to know how he's going to uh, approach sustainable economic growth, uh, scaling up our supply chains, uh, the green industrialization of our country through energy as well. Massive issues as part of that well-being economy. And most importantly, perhaps, is that Neil Gray is indeed an Aberdeen fan, and uh, I think that should be celebrated <laughs> any time an Aberdeen fan makes cabinet. OK, well, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll maybe edit out that out. We'll see. <laughs> uh, Andy, uh, in, in broader terms, um, would you regard this as a, a continuity uh, cabinet, or, or is there a wide tent here? No, I mean, I think you have to see this as a continuity cabinet. There has been a significant reshuffle in that many people have changed jobs, but it's a reshuffle rather than a rewire. Um, it is the same people. Every member of the cabinet served in the Nicola Sturgeon government, either as a cabinet secretary or as a minister, and every member of the cabinet was an open supporter of Hamza Youssef. So I, I think it's difficult to label this a change cabinet. This is absolutely a continuity cabinet. That's not necessarily a criticism, though, because I think that it's been very clear that Hamza Youssef's strategy is to welcome in those who supported him and not to welcome in those who didn't. It's a very clear rejection of the side that lost and a very clear signal from Hamza Youssef that he is the winner he will govern from his side of the party with his people. It's a bold strategy. I think it's a deliberate strategy. Um, and it means that, you know, everything is now on the line in terms of uh, them delivering. But a very experienced cabinet who've uh, got a lot of ability and have been doing this between them for very many years. So I don't think there were actually too many surprises in the faces that we saw on the steps of Butte House earlier on. But is that, as Andy was saying there, Jeff, no Kate Forbes or her supporters. Is that a missed opportunity, perhaps? Yeah, I certainly view it that um, way, uh, simply because Kate Forbes is, is such a huge talent. I think she's widely respected across the political spectrum, and indeed she does have a good relationship with business, particularly uh, out there. And she's also an electoral asset, and she displayed that during the election uh, campaign uh, that's just been taking place. I mean, she was polling uh, as the most favoured candidate to the general public as well. But most importantly, she uh, ran up the score 48% in that contest. And I do think it would have been great, uh, a more unifying party of government, to have that 48% uh, represented. But do you know what? Uh, Hums is his own man. He's first minister now. And he needs to uh, play the ball as he sees it and play the, the, the politics as he sees it. And perhaps he's looking at a very challenging environment, a cost of living crisis, public policy challenges before him, and says, you know what? I just need people I can trust around him. So if that's the case, fair play. Is it, is it politically an error, do you think, Andy? It's only an error if it doesn't work politically. I mean, you know, I, I think the t time will tell, and we've got an election coming up probably in the next 15 or 18 months, and we'll see then how that goes. I think there are, there are two things that we know. We know that inside his own party, there is a very significant minority, almost half, who wanted a completely different approach under Kate Forbes, because that was a genuinely different approach that would have completely broken from the orthodoxy of the Sturgeon government. So we know that. And we also know, as Jeff just said, that polling indicated that that approach is also more popular in the country 
than uh, the approach that Hamza Youssef has chosen. So will it work? We don't know. The, the bar at the general election is very, very high. He's got 48 seats to defend, almost 80% of the seats at Westminster. At the moment, polling looks like it's going to be very, very difficult to reach that high watermark again. But ultimately, the success of all political strategies, Hamza Youssef's, it would have been the same with Kate Forbes if she'd won. The success will be determined at the ballot box. And it's not that far away until we find out how that goes. Jeff, uh, no, for the first time, no Salmon, Sturgeon or Swinney in uh, an SNP cabinet. How does this cabinet compare to some of those that you worked for previously? Well, I think uh, it was one of the most interesting things when I actually looked at the list uh, written down in front of me today of the cabinet. And I thought, you know, for the first time since 2007, no Alex Salmon, no John Swinney, no Nicola Sturgeon, huge names in Scottish uh, politics. And so it is a very much a new era, a new dawn for devolution, if you will. Uh, as Andy says, this is only going to be judged, uh, yes, at the ballot box, but also uh, through opinion polls and through general tenor, the public are really, really looking for answers on some key issues. Cost of living crisis, prices are high, and they want some answers quickly. So they're going to have to get going, and they're having to get going pretty damn quickly, I would suggest. And, and Andy, on that, how, what are the challenges? Uh, how do the challenges this cabinet uh, uh, is facing compare to those of previous Scottish governments? Oh, look, I think it's fair to say that there has never been a more difficult set of circumstances for any incoming Scottish government. There has never been a worse entry for an incoming First Minister than there is for Hamza Youssef. Cost of living crisis is unprecedented and it is making life very difficult, not just for people on low earnings, not even just for people on, on middle earnings, but for quite a lot of people right across the spectrum. Life is a lot more difficult than it was before. He faces a health service, well, Michael Matheson now faces a health service, which has is not so much crumbling, but has already crumbled. Um, Jenny Gilruth faces an education system which, you know, is being sort of hidden away in terms of its problems, but faces massive, massive structural problems and performance problems. I don't think there is any chance that any previous First Minister faces the, this difficult a set of circumstances as Hamza Youssef does now. It is not for the faint-hearted. And very briefly, an answer for, from each of you with only a, a little time left. Who should we be looking out for as a, as a new face, uh, Jeff? Well, I mean, if I may, two people, I'm really interested to see how um, Neil Gray performs in his economy and energy role. I think that's so important, as I said earlier. And in his junior ministerial brief is, is Gillian Martin, an energy minister from the northeast of Scotland. We've got the critical mass here uh, to really make inroads on renewable energy, and I'll be looking to see how well they perform. And Andy, who are you looking out for? Well, I noticed that was two there from Jeff, but I'll just go for one. Um, you know, other, th other than the economy, which we know is very important, the single most important thing a government does is provide education for its children and future adults. And I think Jenny Golruth is an extremely talented minister. I think she did really well at transport, and I'm going to have a close eye on how she's doing in education. I've got high hopes for that. Andy, Jeff, thank you both for joining us in Scotland tonight.